everybody! So we are here with our next episode in our Colorful Covers series. Um, we have not completed the rainbow, we've moved on. Right. Right. <laughs> but we're not done the series yet. We're not done yet, the series. Right? But we've just completed like the official rainbow. Yes. Um, but today we're gonna recommend you books based on the color pink. So the only um, thing these books have to feature is a pink cover. So yes. they can be non-fiction, fiction, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think we each have five-ish pinks yep. today. Yes. And uh, we're just gonna go down the line and recommend. So as per usual, we'll start down with Crystal. Boom. So my first pick is Searching for John Hughes or How Everything I Thought I Needed to Know About Life I Learned from Watching 80s Movies. <laughs> um, this is a memoir by Jason Diamond. Um, he kind of had a rough upbringing in Chicago, but John Hughes movies were something that he always held dear and they kind of helped him through tough times. Mm -hmm. So part of the story is that he sets out to write a biography of John Hughes, but he's not really trained. He doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's going to try anyway. But that book doesn't ever come to be. And what we get instead is this, him. Just the story of his life and how he's coped with all the rough times that he's had, kind of being a starving writer in New York City, but tying it all in to like his experience with his, his experiences with John Hughes movies and how like one Thanksgiving mm. he was just alone and depressed and eating like crappy microwavable food. <laughs> But he was kind of content to watch planes, trains, and automobiles right. as like I his Thanksgiving that's a John movie. Hughes movie. You know, oh, and it's fantastic. So good. So as a massive movie person and a big fan of John Hughes, I had to pick this up, and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was a touching story, and I think there's a sheet of paper in here where, as I've gone along, I made a list of movies that I haven't right. seen that <laughs> I should see. So it's like a to-do list. I want to see what's on your list. Um, the Blues Brothers, Ordinary People, Risky Business. Some kind of wonderful, just things that there's a lot of time. Yeah. 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 yeah, well, no, these aren't all him. All him. Oh, these okay, are just okay. movies that like were brought up in the conversation of, oh, of 80s, 80s movies. movies. And I was gotcha. like, oh, okay, I haven't seen that. Oh, oh. <laughs> so if you like movies, if you like John Hughes, definitely give this a try. It's such a great little memoir, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy reading something that I don't usually read, but I'm definitely interested in. Cool, cool. yeah, oh, that sounds like a fun one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the first one on my list is an Alcrate Junior pick from last year, and that is A Dash of Trouble, the first in the Love Sugar Magic series by Anna Mariano. Um, it's so much fun. I haven't read the second book yet. I really no. need to get to it. Um, but uh, the main character, uh, Leonora, or Leo, um, as it turns out, uh, all of the women in her family are brujas, which is um, uh, basically like a, a good witch in Mexican culture. <laughs> yeah. um, but they also own a bakery, and so they like bake all this love and magic into their food. Mm -hmm. She sort of stumbles across the secret <laughs> and isn't old enough to yet have this, but also starts playing around right. with magic. Um, it was just, it's so much fun. I loved the character. I loved her friends. I loved her family. I loved how like, um, you know, it's a, it's a house full of sisters who just like fight and bicker all the time, but there's also just like, they've all got each other's back. <laughs> and, uh, when she gets herself into trouble, they help get her out of it. Make you hungry. Totally makes you hungry. There's, I think there's actually like recipes as a book. Ask, the um, recipes in there? I know we sent one out in the box for mm. uh, like a Day of the Dead um, oh, the bread and stuff. Uh, oh, oh th that too. Right. But uh, but yeah, there's there. I, I learned about a bunch of new kinds of delicious Mexican baked goods in this, and it's just super fun. Highly recommend it. Cool. That was one of my favorite boxes that you did as well. It was so cool. Yeah, yeah it was a like, really fun one to yeah. put together. <laughs> So my first pick is one that was quite popular um, on booktube a few years ago and that is Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. Now I will say when I first read it I enjoyed this book but I didn't like love it but I know so many people really really love this book so I wanted to bring it up. Um, this is a contemporary story about a girl who is just out of high school and she is making a name for herself as a set designer in Hollywood oh, fun. Um, and she has been like kind of gifted or like entrusted with her big brother's apartment for the summer and his only stipulation is she has to do something uh, something great has to take place there while he's gone <laughs> okay um there it turns into like a bit of a 
a mystery about like a Hollywood legend. They're trying to track him down. It's also um, a female female romance. Um, and yeah, and it's pink, a beautiful cover. Um, I want to reread it because again, when I first read it, it kind of underwhelmed me a little bit, but I know so many people since have loved this book. So um, I definitely wanted to bring it up because I feel like I was in the minority for this one. Right. <laughs> It ticks a lot of boxes for me. I know, I feel like and, you would like uh, I've recently read a few Nina Lagorn mm -hmm. novels, so. She's a great writer. Yeah. yeah. That's my first one. Cool. Uh, my second book is a book I've talked about before, but I just love it so much, and that is A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. Um, this is a contemporary that takes place in college, which is a bit more, ref mm -hmm. a bit refreshing from constantly being in high school. <laughs> and it's about uh, Leah and Gabe. They have so much in common but never really seemed to cross paths and this book is written from 14 different viewpoints my oh, cool. favorite which is the squirrel who lives <laughs> on campus and it's like everybody is just gunning for these two to get together and like the their english teacher just is like oh. she goes home and tells her wife she's like i just want them to get together so badly they're so perfect for each other and the bus driver always recognizes them <laughs> And the Chinese food delivery guy knows that they order the exact same meal every time they order. Like, they just, it, it's just destined to be. And it's just told so well. It's such a fast read. I read it in one afternoon, sitting on a bench on the mm. seawall, and was just like, I can't put this down. And the sun went down, and I, like, went into the library, and I'm like, I need to finish reading this book. So, so yeah, it, it's refreshing, it's fun, it's romantic, and definitely recommend and it. Pink. And pink. pink. <laughs> and all the little like details on the cover, there's a little squirrel. One of the characters is a barista, so there's a coffee cup, there's oh, some fun. Chinese takeaway. Yeah, it's cute. It's awesome. Sounds cute. Sounds very cute. Mm -hmm. Very crystal. Um, <laughs> yeah, very crystal. Uh, my next one is Hot Dog Taste Test by Lisa Hanawalt. <laughs> uh, Lisa Hanawalt is, has been one of my favorite comic artist for years and years and now I feel like so many more people know her because she is the um the artistic mind behind Bojack Horseman and oh. now also Tuca and Birdie on Netflix yes. um but this is one of the books that she put out it's just like a compilation of her comics from a few years <laughs> ago um and she does a lot of watercolors so you've got Tuca uh, originated a long time ago She's been a character for ages. Um, all just these like very funny, surrealist, sometimes a little bit like rude um, <laughs> comics. And some of them are just like single panel. Some of them are um, longer form stories. She's got one about like all the different <laughs> food carts and stuff uh, that you can find in New York. She's got one about her love of horses. She's like a major horse girl. Um, so you really see the, heavily. see the uh, influence on Bojack Horseman. Totally, <laughs> yeah. Um, I just love her. She's really funny and uh, everyone should. She has a bunch of different uh, books out now, but this is the only one that I own and it's a very pink. It is a very pink hot <laughs> <Yeah>. dog. <laughs> um, so my next one, I have a very contemporary heavy list, which for me is a little bit unusual. Yeah. Not, I mean, I like contemporary, but it's not my favorite genre. But the next one I'm going to talk about what came out either last year or the year before. It's blurring together, but uh, that is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi. This is another one that is set um, like college age and it's just so sweet. Um, it's about our main character who kind of feels like a little bit lost in life or like, doesn't, like she's moved down to Austin, Texas for college and she meets this boy uh, Sam kind of they have like a not a meet cute but a meet cute like he basically has a panic attack and then faints from the heat and they become um, they swap numbers and they become each other's emergency contact Aww. and they start developing a relationship through text message um, it's sweet and it touches on like a lot of like that feeling of being kind of in between high school and college and not really knowing what you're doing in life and like totally. for living away from home for the first time and like being broke and just not knowing how to pull yourself together because we <laughs> all go there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I really liked it. Mary H.K. Choi has another book coming out very soon that I'm really excited to pick up because this debut was fantastic and this cover is beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be a graphic novel when you first picked it up. It's got a very graphic novel-esque cover. It does. It does. Mm -hmm. It's not a graphic novel. Okay. But, um, yeah, it's just a very sweet story and I think that one that can be very relatable for a lot of people. Cool. That yeah. sounds really good. It's a very good one. 
love that cover. Mm -hmm. I also have a very contemporary <laughs> heavy stack, but that's not unusual. <laughs> so I'm just going to continue on. My next pick is P.S. I Like You by mm -hmm. Casey West. It's a bit more pink there. Owl Crate Book. Yes. An Owl Crate Book. Um, my first Owl Crate Box as an employee. Mine too. And... Um, <laughs> My first ever introduction to Casey West, mm -hmm. which changed my life, <laughs> as we all know. I think I've read this maybe three or four times now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just pick it up and I just start reading and suddenly mm -hmm. I'm finished. Um, this is the story of Lily. Yes. So one day she is bored in class and as we have all done in the past, she writes a little like song lyrics on the desk and she comes back the next day and somebody has continued on so they end up kind of it, i find it's a trope that i've learned to like <laughs> in these books where it's like secret pen pals mm -hmm. like yeah. um simon versus the homo yeah, yeah. agenda and this one and others that i thought about earlier but have completely got forgot mail. <laughs> yeah. I know it's yeah. Yeah. But it's totally yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things like that so they kind of get to know each oh like emergency contact mm -hmm. they get to know each other through text and like leaving little notes and stuff and it's just a cute little love story set in high school with all the other like high school elements in it. Like there's a bully and there's the popular guy that you kind of hate, but you love to hate him at the same time. <laughs> and just like family stuff and mm. things like that. And yeah, I'm so glad this was my gateway to Casey West. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun and definitely rereadable, kind of like Rainbow Rowell's rereadable. Yeah. So I highly recommend you guys I will say give this one a shot. This cover? Doesn't make any sense in the context of the story. <laughs> None. <laughs> Just to throw that out there, that has nothing to do with the story. It's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Why would they do that? Do it. Oh, that's I really mean, funny. there are a boy and a girl in this book. That's about who it. Who are though. from like, outside of yeah. the messages? And I just back think it's really forth, funny because it looks like it means something, and it right, really yeah, does. The mustaches and the kissy lips <laughs> has nothing to do with it. <laughs> yeah. huh. But so there's that. Yeah. <laughs> Cute cover though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and nice and pink on the inside too. Yeah, Ooh, I like, very cute. I like this mine. It's very shiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, okay, my next one. So you had the connection to, to this one in the getting to know each other over texts and text notes or whatever and stuff. trope. This isn't a trope, but I, this next one connects to the sort of not knowing where you mm -hmm. are in life kind yes. of thing. Now this is a book that I read this morning because. <laughs> Uh, Corey was supposed to bring another book for me, but just moved and has boxes <laughs> and books yeah. everywhere. But was like, oh, well, you can use this one instead if you want. And that is For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. So I sat down when I got to the office this morning and read it cover to cover and cried at my desk and then <laughs> ordered it a copy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, this was, I, I, don't read a lot of poetry, mm -hmm. but in the last couple of years, I've realized that I find it very moving and mm -hmm. probably should read more. Um, but this is basically like a, a long form poem, long form letter yeah. in book form that he wrote sort of to himself uh, in a time when he was really struggling to be like, what am I doing? Why yeah. am I chasing this dream? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful and it's like he's just he's holy cow is he a good writer yeah. <laughs> um and uh it sold out at the uh indigo near my house because <laughs> i'm guessing a lot of people would buy this as a graduation gift oh probably so because yeah it is a perfect graduation gift um but uh, yeah one of the parts that like really hit home for me was like that he was like when i was 16 i thought i would like uh, know this by the time I was 21. By 21, I thought I would make my first million by 25. Yeah. At 25, I moved back in with my mother. Like, it's yeah. just like, we all have that feeling. We all want something more. And this is basically just like, don't give up on that good dream. Like, keep yeah. feeding that dream. That dream is a real thing, even though it's not like necessarily a real thing out in the world that other people can yeah. see. Oh, I'm going to cry again if I talk about it more. <laughs> so... Just, yeah, definitely, definitely pick this up. It's I think. Amazing. Very beautiful. Uh, this, yeah. Can, like, no matter your age. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I might buy another copy for my mom. I'm going to give a copy <laughs> I just bought for my, to my boyfriend. It's, yeah. Everyone should read this beautiful it's book. For everyone. I for I everyone. I <laughs> yeah. haven't read any Jason Reynolds. Well, you like, can I read don't this know one what's wrong with me. today. And then... No, I don't want to cry at my desk. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> there are things to do. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, he's an amazing writer. Yeah. I really recommend. 
Beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna talk about my last contemporary on this list, and that is Saints and Misfits by S.K. Ellie. Um, this was her debut novel. So this is about our main character named Jana, who is a Muslim teenager, um, and it really ex it's exploring her identity as a teenager, as a Muslim girl, um, and just like her relationship with her family and friendships outside of her Muslim community. Um, she also goes through a kind of traumatic event in here, so trigger warning for sexual assault. The person who committed this sexual assault is viewed in her community as somebody who could never possibly do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously that is a very heavy topic, but it also is just also a really fun and um, interesting story. And it's just really about a teenage girl uh, trying to come to terms with her own identity. Mm -hmm. um, both as just a teenage girl and with her religion. Mm -hmm. um, it's heavy, but it's not too heavy, and I think this is a really great read um, for people in the community and also for people like me who have very kind of little knowledge um, because it does a really good job of teaching about the Muslim faith without being preachy about mm -hmm. it. Um, and I learned a lot from this book, and that obviously isn't the book's intent, but it was a very I found myself, I come out of it and going, oh, I understand a bit more now. Yeah. Um, the importance of representation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so I really, really enjoyed it. I think it was a fantastic debut. S.K. Lee had another book that just came out and I can't wait to pick up that one as well. Cool. And I love this cover. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Next up, I have a bit of a double whammy. Um, that is Love and Gelato and Love and Luck by Jenna Evans Welch. Um, these are a companion to each other. Mm -hmm. um, the first book is Love and Gelato, and this one is set in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. um, our main character, Lena, is sent to live with her dad that she never knew she really had. Um, she just lost her mother to, mm -hmm. I believe, cancer, but I'm just going to say something terminal. Um, and it was her dying wish for her daughter to get to know her father. So off she goes to Italy for the summer and forever. <laughs> And she's just kind of coming to terms with getting to know a stranger and being in a new place and trying to make friends. And she does end up meeting a boy. It's a romantic comedy, basically. Um, but she's also gifted a journal that her mother used to keep while she was living there with her dad. And she kind of uses it as like, it's almost like a little mystery to unfold. So Ren, this boy that she meets, they kind of take on the mystery and go investigating into the city and try to put the pieces together of what her mother was like at that time in her life. And it's just a really nice story. I listened to the audio audiobook and it was really well done and I just kind of didn't want to take my headphones yeah. off ever. <laughs> and then in that book, in Love and Gelato, she's always phoning her friend back home in the States, who is the main character in this book. Mm. And in here, Addie is uh, visiting Ireland with her family um, for some like wedding that's on like TLC or something it's like a wedding TV show and her aunt is just like over the top and stuff and after that she is going to go to Italy to meet to meet up with Lena but as things happen she ends up going on a random road trip with her brother and this guy that she's never met before that her brother was like online friends with and it's just a fun road trip of Ireland and just really fantastic and there's lots of like family conflict, but also like Addie's trying, they're both like coming of age-ish. They're mm -hmm. both like getting to know themselves and it was a lot of fun. I think I listened to the audiobook of this as well, but yeah. I just loved both of them. Yeah. And I will say you don't have to read Love and Gelato to read Love and Luck. Mm -hmm. I read Love and Luck first mm -hmm. and then went back and read Love and Gelato. You can read them separately if you want to. Yeah, they are yeah. perfectly good standalones, but like, um, Anna and the French Kiss yeah. kind of series. You can read them separately, but you can also enjoy the cameos that they make yeah. in each other's books. Nice. nice. Yeah. My next one is the one that I was hoping that Corey would bring, <laughs> but that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, this is the problem with getting books out from the library all the time, as I very rarely actually own them myself. <laughs> um, but that is Severance by Ling Ma. I have talked about this several mm -hmm. times now, I think. Uh, it was one of my favorite reads of the year so far, and one of my favorite covers, and it's very, very pink. It's very, very pink. <laughs> um, 
It's a little bit hard to explain. Mm -hmm. I was talking to Ave about it this morning and she was calling it, uh, it's like satirical sci-fi. Yeah. Which it, I guess, mm. kind of fits. Yeah. It's not like funny satire. No, but it is. But it is... Commentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Commentary, for sure. But, um, it is both like sort of millennial coming of age mm -hmm. in a way that I thought was done so well. Mm. Uh, and also like dystopian zombie, kind of zombie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, zombie in a different way than you would think. Totally. <laughs> I am not a zombie person at all. I yeah. really don't like zombie stuff. This is not zombies like we've seen them before. It's not Walking Dead. <laughs> no, there's no, yeah, <laughs> definitely not Walking Dead. Basically, um, our main character, uh, Candace, um, works in an office. She works in a, at a publishing house. Mm -hmm. Um, she is, uh, Chinese American. Her parents immigrated from China. They have now died. She is like alone in New York, alone in the world. But through this job, she actually ends up going back to China for like production kind of stuff, just through, yeah. through work, which mm -hmm. I also just from our very particular job mm -hmm. found interesting, mm -hmm. uh, just, yeah production kind of stuff. Yeah. That's a segue. <laughs> Anyways, uh, as the book goes on, there's a fever that breaks out um, and, you know, starts in big ports, so like New York and LA, um, and very quickly spreads. And suddenly she is very alone in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like, it was unlike anything I'd ever read. It bounces around through different timelines and different stories, but all centered around Candace, and I just loved it. I I think I'll probably reread it again before I think the I end would of like the year. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it's not very long. It's not very long. No, yeah, it's it's quite thin. Um, but uh, but boy, yeah, Ling Ma packed a lot into that short. Little I feel book. like it's like a. I think we've talked about this before. Too, mm -hmm. It's like one of the best kind of depictions of what our relationship with technology is. Yeah. Um, which is, of course, very relevant to our lives these days. Yeah, because, well, this is, okay, this this I knew going into the book, so this mm -hmm. is not a, a major spoiler, but basically, like, the way that people become zombies due to this fever is that you, uh, both technology and, like, the, the workforce, like, capitalism, yeah, basically, yeah, yes. our system, but people just, like, continue to go about their patterns of life, so, like, people will still get up get dressed go to work but then you find them sitting at their computer and they're just like just randomly typing typing nonsense and like, yeah wow. still like dialing phones yeah but like... it's all just like rote yeah. stuff like just going through the motions and that is what it is to be yeah. afflicted with this this fever the shen fever anyways it's amazing i don't yeah. want to spoil anything else for yeah. you i it's but uh Adult novel, but check. Yes, adult novel for sure. It sounds like it could be an episode of Black Mirror. Does it have yeah. that kind of feel to it? Because I actually don't think I've heard you guys talk about this book. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with it. Oh, but yeah, it is. It does have a bit of a Black Mirror. Interesting. Twist I'll have to, to check it. it out. Yeah, it's cool. It's it sounds cool. cool. Yeah, very unique. Mm. Good point. Um, all right, so my next one is a fantasy book, Ooh, and that is The Bells by Danielle Clayton, which got a bunch of buzz uh, last year, um, a beautifully written novel, and this is set in a world in which um, people are like born colorless, and the bells are these special girls that have the power to uh, like give you beauty, basically. Um, which is like a very painful thing, mm -hmm. uh, so like, oh, and then you have to pay for it, so like the rich people <laughs> get it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's about a group of girls, um, Camila is our main character, and she wants to become like the head bell, like the bell who works for the royal family, and there's this competition they have to do to, uh, to uh, earn their spot in the household, but of course you uh, soon find out that things are not as on the surface as they seem. Um, it definitely gave me like... Um, vibes of like the capital from the Hunger Games. I um, think. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is set in more like a um, New Orleans type style place, but like the people there gave me this like beauty above everything. Mm -hmm. um, but of course there's plots within plots and the bells who are meant to be these like perfect creatures. Um, of course, not as everybody is as good as they seem. Um, it was wonderfully written. Uh, I can't wait to read the next book, which just came out. And uh, yeah, it's a really excellent series. And if you like some like good flowery writing, then I think this is a 
Good one for you. Also, so pink. Very so pink. pink. So pink. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's set in the city of Orleans, but it's very cool. cool. Very cool book. So, I realized that I don't actually have that many pink books, and <laughs> any that had pink on them I used for our purple books. Ah. Fair enough. <laughs> so, I do have a TBR instead of a recommendation, Yay. but I do know this comes highly recommended. Yes. And that's The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Um, I remember when this came into the office and I was like, that's beautiful, I want to read it. And then in classic crystal fashion, I didn't. <laughs> um, so I think I might just, uh, I think Avey wants to read this. You'll get to that this, so fast, yeah. But when Avey's done, I think I might read it next as well. It's so good. It's so, just lovely. It's the story of a prince who wants to wear dresses, so he hires a dressmaker? We, we meet the dressmaker we first. We meet the dressmaker yeah. first? Yeah. Cool. Um... But the it's a graphic novel, and the illustrations are just absolutely beautiful. I love the color palette yes. and the design, and I think it will be a lot of fun to, to read. There's so many, like, just, just fabulous so dresses. beautiful. So. Just all about, like, acceptance and yeah. be, the courage to be yourself, and it's oh, just, I loved it. Yeah. I love heartwarming stories. So, yes, I haven't actually read this myself, but I've always wanted to, and it does come highly recommended. Nice. Nice. Um, my last one is a real departure for anything else. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is The Watermelon Seed by Greg Pizzoli. Uh, this is one that I picked up when I was in Texas with Kelly earlier this year. <laughs> um, Greg Pizzoli has written quite a number of uh, picture books, but this is my favorite one. Um, and it is just about this, uh, was he an alligator or a crocodile? Mm. <laughs> uh, crocodile. Uh, about this crocodile loves watermelon chomp 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 he eats it all day long he's loved it his whole life <laughs> um but then one day he eats a watermelon seed and freaks out that it's going to grow uh, a plant in his stomach and that vines are going to come out of his ears <laughs> and what is he to do and he's freaking out and then he burps and the seed comes up and everything's fine and he says i'm never gonna eat watermelon again nah. okay maybe just a little bit chomp 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 <laughs> <laughs> so cute. So cute. So pink. And I really, the, uh, he tends to do this with a lot of his books. I love that it's like, it's just, it's so bold and graphic yeah. and like just the green and the pink and the, the black and the palette, white. Yeah. It's uh, very satisfying to read. So cute. Love, love how relatable it is too. Like when you were a kid and did your parents ever tell you if you ate oh, the seed of something it would grow in your stomach? Tummy. Yeah. It's like, oh, You'll... I can just imagine the panic. <laughs> yeah. It's a very, very good glimpse into kid logic. Because why wouldn't it grow on your tummy? You don't know that. Yeah. Now on a completely <laughs> end of the spectrum, the book I'm going to go to, I'm not going to hold it up a, without a precursor here, because this is a very, very adult graphic novel that is called Bitch Planet. <laughs> very, one of the most adult things I've ever read, so just know that. <laughs> um, this graphic novel I found so satisfying because we are kind of in a world right now where sometimes being a woman feels like a battle in and of itself. Yes, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Time. And um, <laughs> this book is set in a not so distant near future <laughs> um, where basically the patriarchy has One. flexed its muscles <laughs> okay. even more, shall we say. And but on the back says, are you non-compliant or do you fit into a box? Are you too fat, too thin, too loud, too shy, too religious, too secular, too prudish, too sexual, too queer, too black, too brown, too whatever it is they'll judge you for today. You may just belong on bitch planet. <laughs> and basically, if you if you're a woman in the society, if you at all step out of line, they send you to this prison planet called <laughs> bitch planet. <laughs> and it's just fantastic. Um, if you just want to feel angry. If you want to like really like you're not angry but like angry and like oh we need to fight back yes um useful burning anger. useful burning <laughs> anger this is great um it is incredibly it is incredibly diverse and um intersectional and it's just great but again can i begin it you can but it's very like the women start battling women and it's but it's just there's plots and it's yeah anyways it's incredible but do not recommend for anybody under the age of 18 for sure <laughs> yeah, I would say. Tread lightly. Tread lightly, yes. You've been warned. There's a lot of violence, a lot of just 
oh it's terrible <laughs> anyways it's terrible but incredible and uh yeah i like the art design if you're feeling a little bit of anger towards our new the cycle man. lately <laughs> this might be a good one for you to pick up I feel like I would say like 16. Okay, I haven't maybe, read it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it could be 16. I don't know. I'm just, maybe I'm sensitive. <laughs> Neat. Yeah, it's a really... Well, I will be reading this in short order. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was Pink Books. What a diverse... Yeah, right? so many... Kyle, we've got here. Yeah, I love it. Uh, a few different choices for you guys. <laughs> Um, I will we'll be sure to list all of them yes. down in the description if you want to check any of them out. Um, yeah, we'll be back. I don't know what color we're going to do next, but we'll be back. Black books, black books. Yeah, we have another Oh, yeah. Black okay. or gray. We'll do something like that next, but cool. okay. stay tuned. But yeah, if you like this series, give it a th big thumbs up. If you have any other pink book recommendations for us, leave them in the mm -hmm. comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Um, yeah, happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.